All right, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to our second winner's bracket matchup of the day. It is Bob versus Microwaved Lobster here. We have already seen Bob win their first pick by a very close margin. We are on to the first pick from Microwaved Lobster, which at this point, with Badoo being the only combo left and finally dropping a little bit of accuracy there, holding the SS halfway through on this pick is looking very, very good for Microwave Lobster as they consolidate a more than 600,000 score lead here by the break. My name is Dio, I'm here once again with Fiery Rage for our second winner's bracket matchup of the day. How's it going, Fiery? I just find it really funny that both Suwagi and Nanoya wrote Wall and Smoke. I don't know if that was coordinated, but that was kind of crazy if that wasn't. But uh, yeah, as you were uh, saying, uh, this is the second winner's bracket matchup that we have. This is to determine who gets the next spot in the top three. Bob winning their first pick. Microwave Lobster on this pick. Going to be winning it at this point. There's not really uh, anything that Bob can do to really change that. It's going to be a very solid point for them. Go ahead and uh, wrap up what has happened so far here. If you do take a look at the MP link we saw earlier on, again, that first pick for Bob. It was double time three was the first pick off the back of 900Ks from both Keeg and Nenerik. They were able to take that by a mere 15,000 points, not even 15K on the first pick into this hidden one, won by about 700,000 for Microwave Lobster off the back of really, really solid, consistent team scores. Of course, earlier on, the bands here, Hidden 2 for Bob. Pretty well-placed band, given what we just saw on Hidden 3. And uh, Hard Rock 1 for a Microwave Lobster. I think just not looking to contest the raw mechanics from Bob, as their team does have a very, very good mechanic squad. More so looking to take advantage of their very, very strong gimmick players. And you can see... Of course, Bob, the exact opposite strategy, looking to just pick into mechanics and go for these sorts of speed and aim picks primarily. It's what's worked for them throughout the rest of the tournament, and it's likely what their game plan is going to be through the rest of this match as well. Yeah, Bob have probably one of the most crazy speed rosters remaining in the tournament at the moment. Some absolutely insane players on their side for speed. You got Keeg, you got Ninrek, you got Raikaho. Pretty much what you can name four people on this roster that would be insane speed players and they would probably just like all FC the speed maps. That's how crazy these guys are. But uh, Microwave Lobster on the other hand Seed 1 Definitely not a slouch on their own speed roster. We can see uh, Arnold and Matthew swapping in here. The two that you would expect to play this the most. Intercamming as well. Coming in for the Nomad 5 as well as Ristol. I think no real surprises for these rosters when it comes to the speed. Maybe a little bit surprising to see intercambing in instead of, for example, Bartek on this sort of map. Although Bartek has, as of recent, been less and less of a speed player compared to what he used to be known for in tournaments and the kind of prowess that he used to show in tournament all the time um, on the speed picks in particular. So. Uh, not too surprising in that regard to see somebody sub in for him. Uh, that said, though, the remaining speed roster for Microwave Lobster, you have players like Intercambing, like Reed Cat, like Fancy Lad, who can play the speed, but it's not their forte. And so I think Bob and the other high-tier rosters are going to look to abuse that, as we see already uh, from Bob on this map with four really well-known speed players in for this map. Yeah, we're seeing that being reflected in the early combo of this map here. Still holding on to four FCs throughout this little bursty section here. Ristol, so far the only person to have dropped. Everyone else still holding on. Nenric going to be finding a Bancho break. That's not an actual break. Ha, you thought. 
And yeah, it's just Ristol with that break, and that's literally the only difference. Shield finally going to be trading that at some point here. As we get into the break now, score gap is only about 120k in favor of Bob with the combo advantage back in Microwave Lobster's favor. We'll see any drop at this point can be uh, detrimental to either team. We'll see which one is the next one to drop. Oh, and there goes Bob just like that. No combos on the side of Bob. It's the Arnold and Matthew show. The two speed players that you would expect to do well on this type of map. Uh, absolutely destroying it. 99% uh, across the board. Not really too much to say. Uh, they like speed. And you are seeing that in dividends right now. Yeah, those two players on speed maps in particular always look really, really good, and they're going to be able to combo the hard part of the map and carry their team through to a victory. The entire difference essentially coming uh, from the fact that Matthew and Arnold comboed that part, whereas uh, Reiko Hokig and Nainarek were unable to. Uh, one of the supporting scores from Reiko Hokig and Nainarek matching the score from Intercambing. Uh, the other score for Bob from Shield matching Malashevsky's score. So entirely the difference made between those full combos and those chokes at 1,200 for Bob. An unfortunate way to end the map. Uh, not able to convert on their second pick. And now Microwave Lobster up a break point here within the first four picks. Arnold uh, putting 10 million score for Nomad 5 on the uh, the team sheet, apparently. I don't think he got just shy under 10 million, but <laughs> nonetheless, will be hidden one as a follow-up pick for Microwave Lobster, and I think after the earlier hidden three pick, this is pretty much kind of expected. Uh, hidden one being this awkward aim-oriented map with pretty much cross-screen jumps across the entire play field uh hmm who does that remind you of dio what player skill set does that remind you of in particular hmm. i can't really put my finger on it i uh i, I don't know i don't know Badal? something 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 Badal? something Badal? doable uh, so, something doable uh it kind of rings a bell but but doable that's what this map is that's exactly what this map is uh same as the hidden three that we saw earlier right the uh really ridiculous 700k that we saw from Badoo on that map. You're going to look to him to uh, do something similar on this pick here. Badoo assessing the first half of Hidden 3 earlier in this match. And uh, yeah, is probably going to uh, pull off something similar on this map as there are very few bursts of streams in this one. And it is all like what you talked about exactly up his alley in terms of the hidden aim and aim control requirements. You got a backing roster to back him up as well. Ristol, Intercaming, Bartek, all well-versed in the hidden mod. More than capable of completely destroying this map if they want to, if they are turned on at the moment. But on the side of Bob, we got Krez, notable hidden aim player. Definitely someone to watch out for, as well as Suwagi. Uh, Dragbit 3's rename change. Uh, Raikaho and uh, Nanoya. Satono Diamond going to be coming in for this as well. Yeah, as much as the roster for Microwave Lobster is very, very good on this sort of map, I, I do think that the roster for Bob is also quite competitive. Uh, every single one of these players for Bob is somebody who is still very strong on these types of hidden aim control picks and should have a solid time of it, looking specifically uh, to players like Krez and Suwagi to put up good scores on this map. Krez, a hidden main and a well-known one at that. And Suwagi, also known as Dragbit3, one of the best uh, aim players in the game right now. Still, uh, especially in tournament play in particular, one of the better aim players around and has been showing that off throughout uh, you know, late 2021, early 2022 in multiple other tournaments like Nick's Winter Cup where he managed to place top three. So uh, there's a lot of uh, expectations for all of these players 
And I think the early breaks now from Rekaho and Satono Diamond, you know, they might actually end up making the difference as all of these players are otherwise very competent on this sort of pick. But you can see just how shaky the aim is on this map for players like Krez, Maloshevsky, even Bartek having some of those shakes. Intercam going to be matching some of the misses to come out of Bob as now it is one full combo to two in the favor of Microwave Lobster. Suwagi, the only FC remaining for Bob as we find another couple of sets of misses from Krez and Raikaho. It is Satono Diamond on the recovered combo to now give the combo advantage over to Bob as we see the miss come out from Bartek and Badu be the only player to hold on to the full combo for Microwave Lobster. Does match Suwagi's combo, but nobody matching uh, any combos now as Satono Diamond also finding a drop there for Bob. So it is just these two FCs for Badu and Suwagi. And it's going to be a battle of who misses first at this point, as this map is uh, relatively consistently difficult. There's not really any sort of break that you'd really get in between here. And for right now, it seems like Padu is oh. actually going to be the one to slider break there. Now, combo advantage pretty massively in favor of Bob here, as Dragbit still holding on to that FC. Going to be changing the score gap pretty noticeably right now. None of his team is holding on, unfortunately, but I don't think it's going to matter if as long as he holds on to this FC for just a bit longer, this score gap will shift over. But he needs to hold on. If he misses at any point right now, that would absolutely kill the momentum here. Yeah, the big recovered combos for Bartek and uh, Maloshevsky and Intercam being, bringing up the rear for Microwave Lobster make it so like you said Suwagi has to hold here and there's the slider break to come through all the combos dropped for Krez and Raikovo as well Satono Diamond now the highest combo on Bob's side at just 130 combo uh, Maloshevsky is going to miss but this is going to take full team wipe for Microwave Lobster uh, if Bob does want to take the break points on this one as Suwagi just not quite able to hold on long enough to bring the score back and with the repeated breaks a four-way wipe once again for Bob this is going to be the point for Microwave Lobster. The recovered combos at the end of the map here. So, so good for Bartek in particular, but for Maloshevsky and Intercamping as well, bringing them up above that 400,000 mark. Only one other player on Bob aside from Suwagi at that mark right now. It is Krez. Satono Diamond going to maybe spin just over 400k here by the end of the map, but every single player on Microwave Lobster with a higher score than Krez, who was the second best score for Bob. That is just team difference on that map and team comfort difference, despite the low combos for players like Intercamping and Maloshevsky, lower miscount as well for them, uh, keeping their scores relatively high in comparison to the other supporting scores from Bob. And of course, you know, 700K for Bartek, 600K for Badu on that can't be understated. That slider break hurt. Like that early slider break from Dragbit hurt. That just completely shattered, shattered their chances, rather, on taking that point. It won't be a consolidated break point for Microwave Lobster. Three to one now as we get into Bob's next pick. Probably still going to be remaining in the double time mod. I imagine BT2 is probably. Okay, never mind. I lied. That is going to be second ban from Bob, and so I think I that forgot no about 3... that. Yeah, 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 second round of bans, guys. This is not a pick. Uh, that Nomad 3 ban makes a lot of sense, as does the DT2 ban from Microwave Lobster. Bob's still going to want to pick into some of the speed picks, I think. Um, but there's not any left, really. You got DT4, you got Nomad 2, and you got DT1. And none of those are particularly speed maps, right? So we may end up seeing Bob go into just some of the uh, different sorts of maps. Maybe they go with no mod too. I, 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 is that who knows what they're talking who knows about what they're picking chat. right now? Who knows? Um, That's my favorite pick in the pool. YM two. Yeah, I love playing that map. Well, waiting on an actual pick to come through from Bob. I'm kind of expecting Nomad 2, and after that, I think, you know, we're going to probably look towards some of the other picks in this pool, stuff like the DT1, um, maybe something like that 3-mod one, or 
potentially, uh, sorry, not free mod one, free mod two, uh, where potentially hard rock three, as it is just a stream map. Um, it's a lot more flow aim focused, but it is still streams. So it does kind of fit with what they have been going for. Nomad one, of course, also an option, but ever the RNG pick, uh, maybe something that they save if they are in dire straits rather than one of their power picks. Oh no, they picked double time four. They fell for it. Absolute buffoons. Yeah, they were discussing, uh... They were discussing this in chat, Lobster wanting them to pick DT4 since they banned DT2, and it seems like... Uh, yeah, they're just gonna go for that. Why not? This is actually quite different in comparison to a lot of the, uh... Double times and, uh, Nomad 5 that we've seen previously. This is uh, not really that much of a speed cap map. Only 218 BPM on this one with double time. Pretty much exclusively focused on finger control. A couple of long bursts here and there. I believe there's one 16 note burst. But other than that, Nanoya trying for the uh, the mental war, the uh, the th the throw off here in chat against uh, Microwave Lobster, trying to get them to uh, trying to get them to really feel that Nomad One copy pasta. You know, uh, it was the time of day, the stars were out of alignment. My mom came in my room, uh, my grip slipped, my keyboard disconnected. Otherwise, we would have won. Uh, uh, manually blinking, you know, all all that good stuff, but. Uh, we'll see if it actually ends up mattering at all. This is the kind of map where I think the difference in approach rate, 10.3 reading, really determines the winner. You've got a lot of really technical patterns in this map, which, yes, you need the speed for, yes, you need the technical prowess for, um, but more than anything, this pick really tests how well you can read the higher approach rate. Um, and with so many different skills being intertwined into the same map, this becomes a really, really difficult map to do super well on. Players like S.H.I.E.L.D., who are known for their DT finger control plays, are, I think, going to be really, really valuable for Bob on this sort of map. And we do see Matthew swapping in here. Arnold as the last player, so pretty... Oh. Maybe not Arnold. Maybe Arnold. I don't know maybe, what's going maybe, on. Maybe Arnold, maybe not Arnold. Well, they, they've they used another 30-second extension here uh, to get their last member in. Uh, just for those who are unfamiliar with the rules, you get two... Uh, sorry, three... 30 second extensions throughout a match per team uh, for things like figuring out rosters if you're not quite sure exactly who's going to be playing or if you uh, you know, have trouble getting somebody to just join the lobby. So two of those used for Microwave Lobster here, and that is the point of them. They exist for people to use them. Um, but past, past the third one, we may see some uh, four starts come out at the end of the timer, so... And definitely should be wary about uh, using more of them and just communicate tech issues uh, because that's that's the big thing as long as stuff is communicated we can usually uh, make sure that they are able to get their desired roster in that said we're gonna be getting into this techie dc4 pick here nobody breaking in the intro which is rather surprising actually good accuracy for most players as well pretty even accuracy trade between the two sides so far we see an early break for Suwagi on the cut streams and Lucrece with a slider break right afterwards leaves Shield and Ninerik up against now three full combos with that drop from intercambing. But uh, still combo advantage for Microwave Lobster here. Finally a drop from Matthew to answer another break from Suwagi. But ever so slight combo lead. Now a little bit of bigger combo lead as the crease finds another drop. Matthew and Intercambi going to trade once again, which does leave ever so slight combo lead with Bob. But it's really the full combos that we're looking at right now. Shield and Nynerik versus Malashevsky and Arnold on this map with the FCs for either team. Approaching near the halfway point of the map. And combos... Uh Still relatively in favor of Bob now with Matthew breaking right before the break here, but 
it's not going to matter that much. This map is fairly long, so a lot of combo potential and a lot of break potential. But it's still two FCs to two. It's just that slight combo advantage pushing Bob over the edge right now, but when all is said and done, that combo advantage can suddenly go very wrong. And it would be a very, sh it would be a shame if Shield happened to break right there and Lucrece. Ninerick now the only combo remaining. Arnold does trade one of the dropped FCs. It's Ristol versus Ninerick with Suagi on the recovered combo right now. And goodbye. Yeah. This is the Ristol show. The under aim there for Ninerick not going to be what they needed for Bob. And yeah, it's, it is the Ristol show. This guy on DT4 is throughout 2022 has just been an absolute pleasure to watch. Uh, if you go back and watch some of the VODs from Nick's Winter Cup earlier this year, you can just see him absolutely demolish some of the most difficult double time fours uh, that the tournament scene has had ever. And he's going to continue to do it here, man. The score is just insane. 98.5 accuracy on this map with the full combo still intact going into the very last part of this pick is absurd from Ristol. Even on a semis pool, this map is so, so difficult to be consistent on. You can see some of the other scores on his team. 300k from Intercamping, 400k from Mathy. The best scores on either team aside from him are 550 and 600k. And this man is just going to full combo like it's nothing. Best accuracy in the lobby to boot. Well, double S rank from the side of Bob, Lucrece, and Nunnerick having some unfortunate slider breaks here and there, but even if they had FC'd, actually if they did get maybe a couple of other breaks, or like different breaks at different times, it could have shifted the other way, but in any case, that play from Russell going to be pushing them over the edge, and that is their fourth point, second break point now, as they get into their next pick. And a pretty quick pick at that. It's going to be Nomad 6 coming out almost instantly from Bartek. Just a little bit of discussion with the team before now picking into the uh, the Rhythm Hell map in Nomad. Map AR 9.4 OD9. And yeah, it's only two minutes, but with all the constant changes between a third, a fourth, a sixth, uh, this map very, very difficult to properly act. You add in a lot of the aim control that goes into those patterns as well, and you get something that is uh, a little bit, a little bit devious, a little bit dastardly for a lot of these players to do well on. We'll see. I think a lot of players again who not only have the speed to do well on a map like this, but have the aim control to back it up and keep the combo together. And you may even see some players who maybe don't have the speed required to get good accuracy, but have the aim control to keep the combo together and can just mash through some of the faster patterns in this map. There's only actually, I believe, two really fast-ish patterns in this, and those are two one six bursts, I believe, at 170 BPM, but the rest of this map is pretty much an alt map, I'd say, just with a pretty high BPM with 172. But a lot of changes between 1 4th and 1 3rd rhythm have to stay on your toes and make sure that you at least know where those rhythm changes are. You don't want to be caught off guard by them. So not too surprising to see Badu in for this. The only real speed cap on this is, like I said, those two 1 6 bursts and uh, Badu uh, empowered with the double tap method can uh, pretty easily combo them, I'd say. And we'll see if we end up seeing him uh, combo through as much of it as possible. It's kind of who I was referring to, uh, talking about you know players who may not have the speed required to get good accuracy, but can just mash through and keep the aim control together instead. So couple of players like that in this lobby actually players like reed cat for example not typically known as a speed player but does have the stream stamina to do well on something like this and was originally a uh, flowing precision player before he got really really good at streams over the last year and a half or so if you look back at uh 
tournament VODs from, for example, 2020, and he was primarily a hard rock aim player rather than, especially in precision picks, rather than uh, the stream player that a lot of people know him to be right now. So definitely does have that aim control and flow aim to back up stuff like this. We'll see if it ends up uh, going as well as they hope for Microwave Lobster here on this pick. Malashevsky, Badu, Arnold, and Reed Cat in for this one. Suwagi, also known as Dragbit3, Shield, Keeg, and Lucrece in for Bob. Couple early breaks from Badu and Lucrece so far. Everybody else still holding on to these full combos. That's the first 1 6 burst down. Keeg going to be dropping afterwards. So, full combo advantage now in favor of Microwave Lobster. As well as a very nice combo advantage off of Dude's recovered combo from the early breaks he had. Lucrece and Keeg, on the other hand, not having that much fun as we get into a little one third section here. Back into one force now. And this score gap is going to keep increasing. Lucrece finding yet another miss. And there goes Shield as well on the reading oriented pattern there. Suwagi, the only FC remaining, and I think this is kind of looking a bit doomed for Bob. Yeah, um, these are really good scores from Microwave Lobster. This is still a three-way full combo. Finally, a two-way now as Arnold does drop a miss, but the recovered combo for Badu is very, very good right now. Not too far behind in score. And the accuracy actually looking very, very good for Badu as a lot of this map's patterning is more focused on the changes between one fourth and one thirds rather than into one sixth and one eighths. And uh, yeah, no real need to mash for Badu through a lot of this map as he's just right in his element in this sort of pick. Highest accuracy in the lobby right now, right there next to Malashevsky, still holding that full combo with pretty similar accuracy as well. And despite the miss coming through from Reed Cat, uh, it is just not going to matter at all all over a million team score difference for microwave lobster showing off on that map well bristol with the i believe second fc that he's had so far in this lobby and now, match point for Microwave Lobster. Bob having to uh, claw back two of their points. And the comeback's going to need to start now more than ever because otherwise, Lobster will be our second team in the top three of the perennial. It's going to be the remaining somewhat stamina speed oriented pick. Nomad 2 now picked up for Bob. 200 BPM flow aim is the name of the game on this one. Five minutes long, only about four minutes and 30 seconds of actual drain time, however. And this is uh, pretty much just your average flow aim test. Not really too much else to say about it. No, unless you, uh, <laughs> unless you have anything particular that you want to add. Um, not in particular. Not a long stream. It's a very consistent map uh, for what that's worth. There's really not any major breaks in this map, and there's not any sections that stand out as you know full-on death stream parts of this map versus parts that. And are a little bit more bursty and focused more on the triples and five note bursts instead of death streams. This really is uh, as kind of consistent of a Nomad 2 as you get, but at five minutes long, this really is, with that in mind, going to favor the team who is just better on those 200 BPM streams. Lots of very, very good stream players in this lobby right now. Uh, Malashevsky, Intercambing, Arnold, and Reed Cat currently in for Microwave Lobster, Raikaho. Satono Diamond, also known as Nanoya, Nynerick, and Lucrece in for Bob. Uh, both of these rosters looking very, very solid for what could be our last map of the match. Bob looking to turn it around right here. 
Yeah, well, you definitely can't ask for better Nomad 2 players on the side of Bob. Rekaho, pretty well known for being an absolute Nomad 2 beast. We also have uh, familiar faces like Nanoya and Lucrece in there, more than capable of playing these types of stream maps. And Minarek, of course, being a well-rounded machine that he is. Going up against Ristol, Reed, Cat, Intercamping, and Arnold is going to be a bit of a tough task. See, early breaks from Nenerik. As we said, this map is uh, very long, so these early breaks not going to matter that much. It's mostly going to be the breaks or consistent breaks that we see throughout the map. Or breaks at the middle section. If you uh, break at the middle section, then uh, your score is kind of hard capped to 600k, and that's not fun. wait for this map to pick back up probably before we see any more breaks from any players these sections right here easy places to drop we see lucrece and satono diamond drop on these space streams going into the first ki time now with the four-way full combo still intact for microwave lobster every player for them oh finally a drop from malashevsky happens and a chain drop as well Finds a ton of accuracy lost, went from 99.5 or 99.7 down to 97.5 with those chain misses. Unfortunately for Bob, that's not really going to be enough. Still three full combos intact for Microwave Lobster and only Raikoho holding the FC for Bob. With Arnold dropping, that does make things a little less grim on this map. As like you said, there's a lot of room for these combos to be built back up. But with the repeated breaks for Nineric, it's not looking as good as it could with that in mind lucrece and satono diamond still holding some combo for bob but the score lead still going to be growing for microwave lobster with reed cat and intercamping holding the fcs we're going to be getting into a little bit of a diff spike section at the solo here uh some of these streams get uh, quite spaced out there's a big chain miss from nenerik as well Score gap is still around 200k, so if Reedcat and Entercaming both miss and Reiko holds on to this FC, this is a spacing I was talking about, by the way. There goes Reedcat, there goes Satono Diamond on that spacing. Entercaming versus Reiko now on the FCs, and Lucrece with a nice recovered combo, but Arnold and Malashevsky as well on their own recovered combos. It's going to be uh, putting a little damper on things for right now. Okay, there goes Lucrece on the one third. Uh, definitely not not the person you'd want to see break there. Uh, at this point, it is going to require intercambing to break the FC soon for Bob to have a chance at this pick, I think. I mean, basically now, you look across the board, there's no high supporting combos for Bob. Even that miss from Arnold is not going to impact things at all. It's traded once again by Ninerik as Lucrece and Satono Diamond do what they can, but... I mean, Lucrece cannot match that 1,200 combo out of Malashevsky right now. Even with Satono Diamond matching the combo out of Reed Cat, uh, Intercambing is going to need to break right now for this to go over. And we may even need to see multiple breaks for the rest of Microwave Lobster as this pick for Bob just not working out. Intercambing does find the drop, but there's only so much map left. There's only so much score that Raikaho can add on with this full combo. And despite... The miss coming through despite the full combo dropping for intercamping and despite Raikaho holding right into the ending of this map, the supporting scores are just not going to be there and this 200,000 score lead speaks for itself. It's going to be 6-1 to one for Microwave Lobster. And nuts FC from Raikaho though. Definitely not going to downplay that at, at all. That is a absolutely crazy FC coming from him just unfortunately not going to be quite enough to beat the overall team consistency on the side of Microwave Lobster on that map yeah Raikaho casually setting the uh, 625 PP score in match on that map with the full combo but 
just not quite able to bring it home because of just how strong the scores were from the rest of microwaved lobster just an absolutely ridiculous performance from both of the teams actually that have now made it into the top three microwave lobster gonna be joining el dupa in the top three in winners finals with this victory over bob very very well played from both of these teams as microwave lobster once again showing why they are the first seed and displaying the dominance that they have had all throughout the rest of the tournament oh the winners semis are now concluded all we have left now is the remainder of the losers bracket matchups which i believe we have two of if i'm not mistaken and those are going to be happening tomorrow it's going to be Cora Lovers versus Thanks Guys and Trev City versus I forgot that team name. My bad. Oops. That is Tofu Gang is the other team that is left in Trev City with the upset win over Pissing On. Pissing On seed number six now eliminated from the tournament in top eight and Trev City seed number 13 advancing into the top six. Really showing off. Uh, how well some of their members can scale into the later stages with that tiebreaker win. Our only tiebreaker of the weekend, actually, so far. Uh, but hopefully these two losers bracket matches tomorrow at 15 and 16 UTC will bring us some more tiebreaker action. You can always hope for it. Thanks again to everybody for watching. Congratulations to all the teams that have managed to stay alive this weekend in the loser's bracket and have managed to make it into the top three in the case of Microwave Lobster and El Dupa in the winner's bracket. We're going to be super excited to bring you more of those matches tomorrow. See you then.